Hey, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, all of the above. I'm Eric Schlitzel, CEO of Curate. Joining me with, um, with a great hat is Manir, Vice President of Curate. Uh, welcome back from Mississippi. Uh, today's conversation is going to be about what you learned, what you saw, who you saw, how it went, and so on. So what have you learned? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for welcoming me back. Um, you know, it's always great to enter a market that we've already broken ground on because um, there's a lot of learnings uh, that we can take from and also a lot of people that are about to get into the space. So a lot of um, listening and teachings. So there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack here. And, you know, after this uh, this video session, you know, we'll have links um, for folks to be able to reach out to us and dive into detail. But I do want to touch on uh, two points. So when you enter a new market, rumors, you know, flow and rumors take on a life of their own. So there were quite a few sessions and quite a few folks and partners talking about some really important things. Um, one of them, the misconception, we've all heard it about the gun license and the medical card license. And what does that mean and what can and can't you do? In short, um, you can have both. And there is a protection law that says that uh, your gun license won't be taken away from you. So in short, like I said, you can have your gun license and you can have your medical uh, marijuana card or just your medical marijuana card. So that was a, that was a good rumor to, to uncover and get into the details. Um, another learning that we had is that, you know, everyone's worried about the amount of medical cards and that mm -hmm. are out there versus the amount of licenses and facilities, you know, that are about to open. And will the state of Mississippi have customers? So as of the end of December uh, 2022, we we're looking at about 1,700 cardholders. And, you know, we're in the beginning of March now, and it's increased to 2,670 to be exact. You know, a few more will probably be added today. It is a slow increase. It is increasing, you know. But with that, there are some deterrents um, that folks have because you do have to take a drug test to apply for your medical card. And we're all worried about our data, our, our identities, you know, our intellectual yeah. property. Um, the state does say that it won't be recorded and it won't show up on, you know, a job application or other other applications that you might be applying for. So that's the guarantee that uh, the state is, you know, providing. Yeah, there's a trust issue there. Firstly. Yeah with regards to getting information to potential patients and secondly, requiring a drug test. I've actually never heard that before. Have you seen that in any other market? No, it's always interesting when you see like regulations and rules, laws that come out out of nowhere. You're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have it. it kind of makes you think what the vested interest there is. It might just be in safety, you know, that, that is legitimate, but it could also be, um, well, who really knows? I don't want to speculate. However, it does seem kind of odd. The The backlog I've heard of Mississippi patients waiting for their card is significant also. Have you heard anything about how they're going to increase the speed of processing? Not as of yet. I mean, everyone is aware of the backlog. Um, yeah. I think it comes down to administration and having the ability to have more physical processors or some sort of system in place. That was one topic uh, that was not addressed other than identifying there are folks that are eager to uh, have already, you know, begun the process. Right. Right. Let's switch just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what I've heard, MSOs are now allowed to enter the market without a local partner at all, without local residency, without any of the rules that typically keep the market local, keep the market, you know, uh, within the state. Have, yeah people been talking about the risk associated with that to their small businesses? 
So the only real conversation on that side were really the people that are involved with the MSOs talking about the opportunity. You know, the mm -hmm. folks right now that are applying, you know, for their one to five licenses, keeping it local, they're really trying to bring cannabis to their community and very focused on that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the fact that MSOs can come in and what that could do to the market as it's done in other markets is really cross the minds of, of, you know, the folks in Mississippi right now. Yeah. I really wonder when they start coming in, if they're going to be limited to five licenses or if they're yeah. going to put all companies together and get past that. It, it, it could be messy. It could be really messy. Do you have any tips for people that are running businesses now, even though it's not on their radar, how to protect themselves yeah. from that type of competition? There's something that I saw and I witnessed firsthand going to uh, several shops while I was out there, clients of ours and non-clients of ours. Folks have really taken to their community and uh, promoted themselves as being in the community and the community has been really receptive to them. Um, you know, and one thing that I loved seeing is we were out one evening for uh, food and, and laughs and I saw different dispensaries all sitting at the same table, which isn't something you really see after doors open. <laughs> right, right. That's yeah. great. And the sense of community, actually, we've seen that help so many businesses in so many markets that it's really nice to hear. And education. Um, sorry, sorry yeah. to interrupt there, but oh. the folks are really taking the time to have education available uh, because this is, there. it's a big military state as well, a lot of armed forces. Um, and another thing that I learned was a lot of patients, they're gonna be trying cannabis in their life um, regimen for the first time. And so the, the stores that are going to be able to continue to speak to the benefits and the education of it, you know, and, uh, you know, providing all that information, which they're doing now, I think are going to stand out. When you look at big box retail, a lot of the times, not not to uh, poke at all of them, but scaling, sometimes you lose touch. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I we think. were just having a conversation with one of our partners yesterday about how to scale boutique. It's yes. very hard. It's very hard. And there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of messiness that happens when you try to abstract out the client experience. Yeah. It could get really, uh, you know, it, it could become suboptimal uh, in a retail location. So from what I understand, the, the state can shut down any facility that they don't like, that looks at them funny. Am, am I victim of a rumor? So I heard that rumor. Um, and matter of fact, uh, this would probably be uh, part of, the curated rumor part two um, <laughs> uh, webinar. Um, but yeah, I am going to break that open. That was one that wasn't addressed. And yeah. there was so much excitement in the two days we were there. I wasn't able to uncover that. Understood. Understood. Any other words of advice for folks that are along the path to opening right now? Yeah. So a big one, vet your vendors. There are a lot of folks um, that are entering the cannabis space from a vendor standpoint that may have not done this before. Uh, there are a lot of folks that are there that have done this before and have done it in multiple markets. At the end of the day, you have to work with, or you will work with, or you should work with, the people that will have your best interest um, at heart so that your vendors take the time to do so. Ask all the questions. Um, let them teach you or speak speak about what they've seen and learned from building and working in other markets. That's going to be your top tier for success. That's really good advice. I'd add on to that, that you should ask hard questions. It's very easy for people to say that they'll be with you, but then to prove it, that's hard, right? And to um, understand what they've done in other states, it doesn't matter, you know, how many states they're in. What matters is how deep their connectivity is with those states and the people that have been with them so you want to talk to existing clients of these vendors if you're new in an industry you really have to know the playing field uh in my experience and it's hard to do that 
when all you're hearing from are salespeople as opposed to people that have worked with the business? Yeah, salespeople, uh, and I'm quoting a partner, will sell you the best features of what they do and overshadow right. what they don't want to talk right. about. You know, we, as, a, as an organization, we believe in the power of the, the dinner table and the bar. Yeah. Get to know your people, take them out for a drink, take them out for dinner, and just talk to them and listen, really listen to what they're actually saying. And then look at what they actually do. Uh, the two don't always align. Yeah. Here, as always, thank you for your time and your insight into the market. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Same here. All right. Take care, everybody.